Hi, I'm Angie Monko, your energy healer and self-love coach for women going through grief and divorce. And today I want to talk about nine tips on how to treat grieving people. I think these, these tips are intended to help people better understand, interact with, and treat their loved ones who are grieving a profound loss. So number one is talk to the griever about their loved one. This is probably the most important one not to avoid someone after they've lost someone they love. After I lost Maddie, I just remember many people avoided me. They didn't know what to say. They were afraid they might stir up painful emotions for me. Or, and they were also uncomfortable with their own pain. I just want to assure you not to avoid someone, but to speak to them and talk to them about their loved one. Speak their name. It's very comforting. And if you're in doubt about that, just ask them. Number two is when in doubt about what a griever needs, ask them. I know this sounds like common sense, but a lot of people are afraid of such conversations. And so they, again, they avoid them. But you can just say, sincerely say, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss. Is there anything I can do to support you? Number three, and this is related, is if the griever doesn't know what they need, which is common, then think for them. This is not condescending or insulting to them. If your world or mine had just fallen apart, we need help thinking. We're not processing a lot. So we can find out, do they need their waters plant, their, their garden water, I mean? Do they need someone to cook for them, bring them food? We had people bring us meals. We had people come and water our plants. We had people go to the grocery store for us. We had a GoFundMe. I mean, the support was amazing. And so you just gotta be willing to ask them for what they need and do some thinking for them during this very tumultuous time. Number four is to follow up with the griever. Um, they aren't thinking clearly. They're getting so many messages and, and te you know, so many people trying to reach out to them. Just you be responsible for following up with them. Don't put it on them at all. And don't take it personally if they don't respond right away. I certainly didn't. Number five is be patient with the griever. We cannot know what they're going through because they may not speak their true thoughts and feelings. And so just, you know, they might not say they're deeply hurting, um, but their journey of grief is their timeline and we need to respect that. Number five, or six, I'm sorry, is be truly present for the griever. We don't have to worry necessarily so much about the words if we can just be present with them in their pain, hold their hand, just be silent and sit next to them. It's our presence that matters more than what we say. Okay. Number seven is understand that the griever is traumatized. There's two parts to this. The first one is we have more emotional pain and it affects our relationships. So the more, it's like the more pain you have, the more it attracts more pain. It's our, our pain's activated. I remember that when I lost Maddie, very shortly after, I left a networking group that had supported me for years and it was very hurtful. I felt very betrayed and you know, part of that was that my pain was activated. Um, and number two is injuries are more common. Like I sustained three injuries in the year after Maddie died and I'm not accident prone. So illness and injury are more common. Um, I dislocated my shoulder. I sprained my ankle and I hit my head really hard on a beam and it bled. Um, so this is common and it's, um, just something to be aware of. Number eight is allow the griever to live one day at a time. From this gentleman who lost his wife in a car accident in which he was the driver, um, and he had PTSD after, this is what he said. When we lose someone we love, we will never be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together again to its original structure. There will always be jagged edges. I live one day at a time. This is really sage advice, but it's not easy to do. We tend to project a future without them. And nine, encourage the griever to take good care of themselves. You know, get plenty of rest and hydration and exercise and nutrition. And let's make sure they're not isolating socially. Um, this is the time to check up on them and make sure they are taking care of themselves. This is critical. Um, I have an upcoming Heal Your Heart retreat. Check in the comments for that registration link. I would love to support you through this grieving journey. Thank you so much.